Hello, my loves. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome in to this video for the new moon in Sagittarius 2022. For those of you who are new, hello and welcome in. We're going to be learning more about our own astrology and then we're going to be utilizing the spiritual tools of the cards to learn more about how to tap in to that astrology based on what's currently happening in the sky. So I'll dive more into that in a moment, but if you want to learn how to get the most out of these readings, I do have a tutorial video for you that helps bring you up to speed with the intentions that I set and the little tips and tricks that I offer to you to get the most out of what it is that I share here. For those of you who are not new, hello and welcome back. It's so lovely to have you here. I'm really honored to be able to serve in this way, to be able to play with our astrological cycles and the cards to really help us to learn more about ourselves and to really make amazing leaps in our lives to the highest good of ourselves and the highest good of all. And if you want to support me, of course you can do that by engaging, liking, commenting, sharing, reaching out to me, letting me know what resonates, letting me know what questions you have. You can do that by donating. PayPal.me slash Devoted Vulnerable, link is in the description, or you can sign up for one of my services at devotedandvulnerable.com slash services, link is also in the description. So let's talk about new moon energy. New moons occur when the sun and the moon are in the same sign at the same degree point. So the new moon always happens in the same sign that the sun is in. The sun moves into the sign of Sagittarius on November 22nd and the new moon happens on November 23rd. The new moon will happen in one degree, 38 minutes. And this lunar cycle, most lunar cycles last 28 days. This one will last from the 23rd of November until the 23rd of December. So when we're talking about this guidance and advice for this lunar phase, we're going to be talking about this cycle period from November 23rd to December 23rd. So we're focusing on new energy and we're focusing on new energy under the umbrella of the Sagittarian energy and archetype. The Sagittarian energy is the archer, the centaur, aiming its bow and arrow at what it wants. It's always aiming at truth and then aiming at other things as well. So if you want to learn more about how Sagittarius influences you and your chart, I recommend checking out my solar readings that I did for the solar shift into the sign of Sagittarius. The sun is the spotlight of our galaxy. As it moved into the sign of Sagittarius, it's spotlighting this sign. And we look at our own astrology to get guidance and deepen our understanding of how this energy and archetype shows up in our lives. You can click on the playlist showing up right now. That'll take you to those videos. The link is also in the description here. So if you want to visit that video after you're done with this reading, you can go do that. For this reading, we're focusing on new beginnings within the Sagittarian energy and archetype. We're actually going to be focusing on a new joy. We're going to be asking the cards to guide us to a new joy, a new beginning, a new expansion when it comes to the joy within our hearts. Sagittarians are optimistic, they're idealistic, they love to learn, they love to adventure, and they are very joyous in their nature. So we're going to be focusing on the joyous new beginnings that this new moon is going to bring us. We are going to be going to my new deck, the Starseed Oracle, to get guidance on where this new beginning of joy is showing up in our lives. I'm really excited to share this new deck with you. I've had it for a few months here and this is the first time that I'm offering it in a public reading so I'm really excited to get into the wisdom and guidance and beauty of this deck with you guys. Now if you want to learn more about the astrology of this moment of the new moon I'm going to recommend Pam Gregory's video which will dive deeper into the astrological energies fully in play at the time of this new moon. It was a really great video that I watched and I do want to link that video here and reference it to you if you want to learn a little bit more about the astrology. For us, we're going to be watching for the house that one degree, 38 minutes of Sagittarius shows up in our chart. Now, if you have no idea what that means, do not worry. I have a tutorial video that'll take you through how to enter in your birth data and how to learn how to read a chart and find a degree point like this. The degree point of Sagittarius, one degree, 38 minutes, 
whatever house that's in for you. And again, that tutorial will show you where that is. That's the video that you watch. All of these introductions are the same. So if you're in the wrong video right now, no problem. Just go to the house that this one degree, 38 minutes shows up for you in your chart. And I'll see you there. So this reading is for you if one degrees 38 minutes and it's of Sagittarius shows up in your seventh house. If you're already familiar with the seventh house energies, you can scroll ahead to the card reading. So houses of the zodiac story represent the where of the energy that we're talking about. So the sun and the moon right now are showing up in your seventh house. So this is where in your life you're being invited by this lunar phase to focus on. This is the house of relationships. You can understand the houses if you start to understand that each house is ruled by one of the 12 zodiac signs. There are 12 houses. They are in order, starting with the first house being in Aries, which is the first sign of the zodiac, and they go all the way around the zodiac wheel. So Libra being the seventh sign of the zodiac story is the ruler of the seventh house. So we take the energy of the Libra and instead of letting it tell us how something's representing, we're letting it tell us where this energy is showing up in our lives. So the house of relationships is the seventh house because Libra is all about relationships, long-term partnerships, marriages, enemies, businesses, contracts, any one-on-one -on -one relationship we are talking about here. We're talking about the seventh house energy. We're talking about this one-on-one -on -one dynamic that we share with other people. So this is where you're going to be experiencing a new joy, a new energy in your life with this moon. And we're going to find out what the Starseed Oracle has to share with you about this. So if you haven't already called in your spiritual support team, taken a few deep breaths and opened your heart to receive the guidance that's most aligned for you at this time, I invite you to do that. Pause the video if you need more time. Ooh, okay. That one just, I don't know if you guys saw that. It just like slid itself out. It's like, I'm right here. Double mission. Lightworker star seed. Serve the world by being you. Mm hmm. Lightworker star sheets are mission and purpose oriented. Many have the feeling that time's running out and that there's something that they came here to do, contribute and create. They're here to grow as souls, individual mission, and also to contribute to the planet in some action oriented way, collective mission. Their collective mission is often answered through a career's calling or by devoting their life to something bigger. Until they remember their collective mission, it can feel as if something's missing or that they're forgetting something important. It's common for lightworker starseeds to feel that they're different and that, and they may carry soul memories of being visible or sharing their voice. As such, they may protect themselves by dimming their light in order to fit in or by spending time in some sort of closet, such as a spiritual closet. You're being called to remember your collective mission and step into it even more fully. You're being reminded that your role as a light worker is to light up the world with your presence. This doesn't have to be a big thing or a decision you need to make. You also don't need to have a great big plan. If you resonate with being a light worker, all you need to do is to work out what lights you up, your passions, your joys, and keep doing that. When you trust and follow the simple path of things that light you up and then lose yourself in the doing, you'll light up the world without even trying. Your journal prompt from this card is how can you serve the world by being you? So yeah, let's relate this card and this energy and this information to the house of relationships. You're being invited to nurture and experience a new joy within the relationships that make you feel joyous, that help you to serve your passion. What relationships are you passionate about? What relationships and one-on-one -on -one dynamics do you get into that help you to follow your passions that help light up your joy you're being invited this lunar phase to experience a new relationship with those people within those relationships follow your joy 
by following the relationship energies and dynamics and feeding those relationships that feed you, that allow your, you to be your passionate light worker self. We have what's called the light worker persecution imprint, where we think about all the people who stood up for love, for light, for peace, harmony, and justice in the world. And we look at what happened to them and it wasn't so great. And so we get afraid to step into our light, into our brilliance and purpose and truth and love because of what happened to everyone else who has done that before. But we don't need to worry about that. This card is saying that it's time to move through that. It's time for you to shine anyway. And it's time for you specifically with this new moon to focus on your relationships that allow you to stand in your light, stand in your truth. If it's a business relationship, for sure, go forward with it. Maybe you might want to start a new relationship. This would be the advice that I would give you here because this is a new joy, a new beginning. Perhaps there's a new relationship, a new business relationship, a new relationship with a lover, a new relationship with a family member, a stranger, a new connection with somebody in who's doing the same kind of work you want to be doing. Who knows? But there is a new energy, a new joy being brought to you through a one-on-one -on -one relationship dynamic that is allowing you to express your joy and your passion. That is your guidance for the new moon in Sagittarius. Let me know how this resonates. Let me know if you have questions. Enjoy your new moon phase. And as always, namaste. The universal light within me salutes and honors the universal light within you. Namaste.